In this video, I will go through different ways for scripts to query bodies and shapes in the scene and will build a laser beam that is reflected in the environment. Let's start with triggers. They are the simplest method for querying the scene. You set them up in the editor and you can use them from a script to query if an object is inside or outside that trigger. Here we have set up a box trigger and use a script to continuously check if a certain body is in the trigger. When the body is detected inside the trigger, it is removed from the scene using the delete function. Triggers can also have the shape of a sphere or an extruded polygon. In some cases, you might want to query the scene in more complex and dynamic ways than a predefined trigger volume. We will now build a laser pointer with a beam that gets reflected in the environment. I've prepared a simple scene and we're now adding a body with a box box shape to represent the laser pointer. On the script side, we find the body handle and get the transform every frame in the tick function. We can use the vector math API to determine the forward direction and use draw line to visualize the laser beam. We're now using a fixed length of one meter, but let's try the query raycast function to determine the maximum length of the beam before it hits something. When calling query raycast, we must provide a maximum ray length in meters. It is sometimes hard to determine, and if you're unsure, just provide a large number, like 1000. The function has multiple return values. First, it returns a flag that says if the ray hits something or not, and the second return value contains the hit distance. If we try this, we can see that the reported hit distance is always zero. This is because the ray origin is inside the laser pointer, so it immediately hits itself on the way out. To avoid this, we can use the query reject body function. This will exclude the laser pointer body from the next query, as if it didn't exist. We can now move the laser pointer around and see that the ray length is correct. With just a few minor modifications, we can make the laser beam reflect on the surface that it hits. First, we need the normal of the hit surface. It is the third return value from the query raycast function. If we hit something, we can use the normal and a few functions in the vector math API to reflect the ray direction on the surface. Finally, we need to put everything in a loop and exit that loop in case we didn't hit anything. Note that we need to slightly adjust the distance when calculating the hit position. Otherwise, the next ray origin may end up inside the hit shape and we would get a zero distance again. Scene queries can also be used for querying the closest point to an object near a certain location or query what bodies or shapes are within a certain volume. There are also numerous filtering options for scene queries that you can read more about in the API documentation. Next time, we'll have a closer look at sound effects, 2D sprites, and particles.